CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Sun, and how about the start for these uh, Arizona Cardinals? Their best start in almost 40 years. They handled the Patriots two weeks ago, dominated the Eagles last week, and people are wondering, are the Cardinals for real? I think the Cardinals are for real because of their defense. They have played outstanding football. They've been labeled a fast defense around the NFL, but a lot of times that means they're a finesse defense. Not so here in Arizona. They manhandled the New England Patriots, and they physically dominated the Philadelphia Eagles. If the Cardinals, with all the playmakers in their roster can continue to play like this they're going to be in playoff contention throughout the year most people think the Dolphins are a better team than their one and two record indicates the big question for them this week was Reggie Bush and he is a go today what does that mean to this Miami offense well he's the key player for both teams the Cardinals will focus their defensive efforts against Reggie Bush and the Dolphins rushing attack they're averaging over 170 yards a game if that continues the car the Dolphins will have a chance to win this game late if they can keep Reggie Bush in Involved. He told us he's not going to play unless he's 100%, but you see there, he's in. The two head coaches, Joe Philbin in his first season leading the Dolphins, came over after five years as the offensive coordinator in Green Bay, and Ken Wisenhunt trying to keep everyone on an even keel here in Arizona after the Cardinals' best start since 1974 when the franchise was still located in St. Louis. There's our referee today, Scott Green, the president of the Referees Association, one day after the association ratified the new eight-year agreement with the NFL and today's game is being broadcast in Spanish where available using the SAP button on your television we are set to go the Dolphins won the toss they've deferred to the second half so the Cardinals will have the football to get things underway William Powell is standing back deep he'll bring it out and fights his way Still on his feet and rumbling forward to the 30-yard line. The ball was bobbled, but the Cardinals will have it in good field position. Anthony Sherman came up with it and continued to advance the football. And you see there it popped out late. You could get a challenge on that. Perhaps Powell was down. I don't think the Dolphins will actually take the time to do that. Ball was fumbled forward and advanced on the opening kickoff. So first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Ryan Williams starting at running back today for Arizona. Short drop from Cobb out into the flat. Jeff King the tight end. And they ruled that he was down. A pickup of two. Kevin Cobb had a week of sweet redemption last Sunday against the Eagles, the team that traded him away two years ago. He completed 70% of his passes for 222 yards and two touchdowns. He came in today as the third highest rated quarterback in the NFL and has not thrown an interception since last October. Second and eight. Cobb from the shotgun. They give it to Ryan Williams. Williams continuing to battle, finally brought down at the 38-yard line. The Cardinals' offensive line has performed better than most people thought they would coming into the season. Lyle Senline at center was here for the Cardinals in their Super Bowl run. Max and receivers, Beanie Wells is out. Ryan Williams gets the start today. Larry Fitzgerald, of course, among the best all time, coming off another huge game last week against the Eagles. Third and three, just underway here in Arizona. in the backfield with Cobb over the middle that's caught right near the mark 
Baker. It just will depend on his forward progress. Larry Fitzgerald with the reception. This is going to be close enough, perhaps, for a measurement. And this is a Dolphin defense that has been extremely difficult to run on at the early part of the season. There you see Fitzgerald, what great hands, being well defended there by Smith. But last week, Larry Fitzgerald was targeted nine times, and he caught all nine footballs. You can't say enough about a guy that dependable in the passing game. And by the nose of the football. Franchise record. He pretty much owns the record book at wide receiver. 121st straight game with a reception. As you see there, him plucking that ball out of the air in traffic down low. It's no fluke. 121 straight games. He is as good as it gets. From the 41 offset eye. Play action. Cobb, center of the field. That's caught by King, who is wide open. And into Miami territory, down to the 39-yard line, Rashad Jones, the safety, made the stop after a gain of 20. Well, a moment ago, we said how difficult it is to run on this Dolphin defense, but it's not so hard to throw on it. The secondary has been exploited every week of the season, giving up two back-to-back 300-yard -back passers. And then, of course, Cobb wanting to get his hooks into that defense as well. Gets off to a good start. King already with two catches for 22 yards. He had only three receptions coming in. Williams tries to bounce it to the outside. Some tough running down close to the 35. The Miami defense up front. Cameron Wake is outstanding. One of the best in the league at rushing the passer. Still looking for his first sack of the season. The linebackers, Carlos Dansby, the former Cardinal, mans the middle. Miami's leading tackler. And the secondary, Richard Marshall, goes today at cornerback. He's been battling a back injury. Came over from the Cardinals in the offseason. Big and physical. Coming off a solid game last week against the Jets. William Powell has checked in in the backfield now. Second and six for Arizona. They give it to Powell. Fights his way maybe for a yard. Jared Odrick made the top tackle the left defensive end. Call it no gain. That's going to be key for Miami. They only had seven guys in the box and stopped the run. We spoke to Randy Starks yesterday, and he said that's the key. They have seven guys up front. If the Dolphins can stop Arizona's running game with just those seven guys and leave four guys in the secondary without helping the run game, they're going to have a leg up defensively. They did it on that play. Another third down for Arizona trying to keep this opening drive alive. Pressure immediately and down he goes. Swarmed under by this Miami defensive front. Five man rush and they got there too quickly. See Randy starts coming up. Everybody flashes in Burnett and it's just a team meeting right at Kevin Cobb as he goes back sets tries to step up. You see all the white jerseys that Cobb can look at. As he steps up in the pocket, all those defensive linemen flash in front of him. It doesn't look like anybody's blocked. He does the right thing, tucks it away and ducks. Cameron Wake was the first one to get him wrapped up, so Wake will have his first sack of the season. Devon Bess is standing back at his own 10-yard line waiting for this Zastadil punt. Calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 10. So Ryan Tannehill, the rookie, will go to work. For this Miami offense, when we come back to Arizona after this. Cardinals came into week four as one of only three unbeaten teams in the NFL. The Dolphins, after a disappointing loss to the Jets last week, looking to even their record at two and two and get back to 500, their opening possession of the game. Tannehill, they run the slant. Javon Bess, the intended receiver. Tannehill, the eighth overall selection in the draft, a terrific athlete. He had just 25 starts in college at Texas A&M. Six of those were at wide receiver. 615 yards, one touchdown, four interceptions, three of those in week one. In many ways, Steve's still an early work in progress at the quarterback position.
Second and ten. Bush alone in the backfield. And the whistle before the snap. Ball start. Offense. Right tackle. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Here's the Miami offensive line. Jake Long has been in the Pro Bowl every year since he came into the league as the number one overall selection in 2008. Reggie Bush was questionable throughout the week, off to an outstanding start as Miami's featured back before injuring his knee last week just before halftime against the Jets. Came in averaging six yards a carry. They move him back five. So from the six-yard line, second and 15 for the Dolphins. Bush. Takes it back to the original line of scrimmage. Here's a look at that fierce Arizona defense up front. Calais Campbell is a force. Nick Eason starts today for Darnell Dockett. The linebackers are outstanding. Darrell Washington has been a big-time playmaker since he came into the league three years ago out of TCU. Secondary, the Cardinals have their Pro Bowl safety. Adrian Wilson back. Patrick Peterson quickly becoming one of the best young corners in the league. Miami facing third and long, third and ten, as the Cardinals are showing blitz, and here they come. Tannehill with time, good protection, that's caught, a first down, it's best. Nice play on third down, good for 16 yards. Well, it was really tough to tell it. Tannehill was going to fit this in, but watch Best on the inside working against Gay, and Tannehill gets this over the linebacker in front of Gay and in front of the safety. Tight window. Dolphins go no huddle. Quick out route. That's caught by the tight end, Fasano. Good for a couple of yards. Kerry Rhodes, the free safety, made the stop. Uh, Tannehill going no huddle. We, right. Spoke to, we spoke to Joe Philbin and how easy and how much better it was that Ryan Tannehill came to the Dolphins and Mike Sherman, his head coach a year ago at Texas A&M, is his offensive coordinator. What a huge difference it's made in his transition. Go, go. Second and eight. Flag down on the opposite side of the field. Bush able to get it back. But there was some confusion before the snap, and we'll check the penalty. Well, they had two guys going in motion. As the play clock wound down, both guys had to freeze before the snap, and I do, do not think they both got set. Illegal shift, offense, two men moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty, previous spot, still second down. And Reggie really never got started. He saw that decided well I better do something and that's why when he took off but he knew that that play was a bust from the beginning yeah that was his heart was not in that run when he took off he still doesn't matter the Cardinals are going to come and tackle him and that's a tough situation for a running back to be in but even though those two guys shifted illegally that's up to Ryan Tannehill to straighten that stuff out pushes out Daniel Thomas has checked in at running back where they come in the blitz Tannehill sidesteps it able to hit part line to the 31-yard line, a gain of seven. Adrian Wilson, the strong safety, made the tackle. That play right there is why people are kind of looking at Ryan Tannehill and nodding their head, and you see a lot of positive. That was a guy rushing up the field, right through the middle of his offensive line, right in his grill. He just calmly stepped aside and completed the pass. That is a very poised play for a guy playing in his fourth NFL game. Facing another third down, third and six. In the extra man again, and that has caught another first down for Sano. Moved down before the ball popped out to the 39-yard line, a pickup of nine yards. And here in the early going, Ryan Tannehill is lighting it up. He's fitting the football into some very tight windows right in the middle of your screen. Fasano helps him out with a sensational catch laying out for it and there's no question he was down when he got that pass but those are a couple of here first a handful of very good throws from Tannehill. Lamar Miller has now checked in at running back and he gets it on first down. Paris Lennon made the tackle after two or three tough yards. There's the running game coming up and watches. 
offensive lineman going to come around and find somebody to block. Nice job up front by the Dolphins, but you see that defensive line of the Cardinals is not getting pushed around, holding their ground for a short game. They bring Reggie Bush back in, second and eight, short drop, and sacked. Sam Acho, the Cardinals feel he is a star in the making. Young guy at outside linebacker who just gets better every week, sheds the block and gets the sack. That's, yeah, Jake Long tried to cut him and Acho wouldn't let him. He dodged the block of Jake Long and kept his feet, and that's the reason for the sack. Tannehill didn't have anywhere to unload it. That hesitation was it. Another third and long, third and 14 this time. They have to get it close to midfield for a first down. And here come the Cardinals. Tannehill gets rid of it. Thomas. And his knee touched down at about the 41. Well, this looks like a lot of pressure coming through the middle, but it was actually designed. It's a screen pass. The, defense, the offensive line lets the pressure get to Tannehill so he can throw the football behind that rush. It didn't work out as the, as the defensive line of the Cardinals sniffed it out and were all over Thomas. Dangerous Patrick Peterson standing back at his own 15-yard line. Set an NFL record with four returns for touchdowns last year. Awaiting the Brandon Fields punt. He averaged almost 59 yards a punt last week against the Jets. Wind over end. Fielded by Peterson in traffic. And brought down immediately. Some extra pushing and shoving. Peterson got it to the 22-yard line after the 39-yard punt. The Arizona defense stiffens. No score. 5-0-3 left to play in the first. We built the Toyota Tundra like you would. You wouldn't give it just any old V8. Yours would have a crankshaft strong enough to take on the heaviest jobs. And you'd make sure your truck's got brakes you can trust. Bigger than any other half ton. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. And by Toyota Care, caring for you and your car. Just the 11th meeting in the series between these two teams. Only the third time the Dolphins have come here to Arizona. Overall, Miami has won eight of the 10 meetings, but the Cardinals have won the last two. Kevin Cobb was three for three for 25 yards on that opening drive. Good throw on first down. Going deep. Michael Floyd, the rookie, tried to make the adjustment, but couldn't bring it in. Nolan Carroll had the coverage. He gets it on. This is what Cobb sees. That's open. He's got to get it out in front of him. You see there, you got to pull that in for your quarterback. I know it's a great catch if he does, getting off his feet. But if you get up and you can get both hands on it, you got to pull that down if you're Floyd. You got to help your quarterback out. That's a great route, and he's going to have another opportunity to get that route again because you know if you can get that open, offensive coordinator is going to call your number again. He had his first NFL reception last week. It was for a touchdown against Philadelphia. Back to the ground, Williams. Trying to get to the outside. Nisi made the stop after a pickup of five. They'll get coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile's free premium access this weekend, including Sunday and Monday night games, NFL Red Zone, and NFL Network access. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile or go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Third and five. Shotgun. Incomplete. Threw it behind Larry Fitzgerald. Three and out. For
for Arizona. For Arizona, it's all going to be about these two guys. If they can hold up in the pass protection and give Cobb a chance to get rid of this football, they're going to be successful. You see there, Cobb has to step up, and the Dolphins are sending extra late blitzers up the middle to help get pressure on Cobb to force the ball to come out quickly. They don't want those secondary to have to cover very long. Zaskadil, a nice high punt. Marcus Thigpen lets it bounce, and it goes out of bounds. 404 left to go in the first. No score, a 52-yard punt. At the beginning of the game, we told you that the Arizona Cardinals defense was very fast. We'll give you an illustration of that right here. Daryl Washington down in his own goal line, inside his end zone. The tackle by Kerry Rhodes forces the fumble. Now watch as Daryl Washington catches up to this play and all the Arizona defenders who run down the field, outrunning the Philadelphia offensive players, getting in front of Sanders for the touchdown. This is a fast defense and is led by that guy right there. He was the fastest linebacker at the combine a couple of years ago when he came out and he hasn't lost a step you notice larry fitzgerald running along the sideline holding his helmet he wanted to share in that celebration bush nowhere to go he's bottled up and the whistle is already blown and there's some pushing and shoving and this is where you're kind of glad the irregular officials are back Adrian Wilson came away with it, but the whistle had already blown and the play was dead. Sam Acho setting the edge of the defense. He's not getting pushed around. You see there the pursuit of the Cardinals. Everybody gets there. and This is the challenge flag is out now as that ball came out so late. Ken Wisenhunt thinks it came out before the whistle came loose and there was an immediate recovery. And that's the only way that they can review this. And now they're, they're going to talk him out of it, it looks like. The play cannot be challenged as forward progress was ruled on the field. And I think that was a that was a good ruling. And he was not on the ground, but the whistle was blowing and he was moving backwards. And it was a quick whistle, no question. But the play was virtually over. And Reggie Bush wasn't going anywhere. They called the play in the interest of player safety. And there you see sort of the, the difference in the replacement officials and the regular officials, the sort of presence in the game and controlling the game, managing things, telling the coach the challenge is not... He can't challenge the that call and that kind of thing. That's right. The difference was the officials were talking to the coaches and not the other way around. Second and 11, officially a loss of one in the previous play. They won the slant the best. And a nice pickup, a first down. Out to the 42-yard line, Wilson made the tackle after a gain of 22. You see here, listen for the whistle. Yeah, the ball came out well after the whistle, and the officials were all over it. And that's why the game should continue and flow like it is. They, they got that right, and they don't need to spend all day talking about it. Another nice pass from the rookie Tannehill to keep it on the ground. Bush, tough yards inside, now just across the 45. William Gay, the cornerback, made the stop. Pick up a three. We spoke to Reggie on Saturday, yesterday, and you know we talked to him. How do you feel? What's going to? He came out and did a nice workout and worked up a sweat earlier today to make sure he felt good enough to go. And he he said, "Listen, I've been hurt before, and you see guys, they hobble around all week, and that last 24 hours before the game seems to really help. And no question, he seems to be 100% for this game. He came in fourth in the NFL in rushing despite missing the second half last week." Tannehill wanted to change the play, but ultimately had to take a timeout. 2.02 left to go in the first. No score here in Arizona. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go.
tonight. See what makes the amazing race the most celebrated reality show ever. Don't miss the season premiere of the Emmy winning amazing race tonight after 60 minutes only CBS. Now let's take a look at Reggie Bush earlier. This is when he decided yeah. whether or not he'd be able to go today. And that's really the issue. It's up to him. He was assured by the doctors and in his own mind that he's not at risk to get further injury because of the, the, the hit he took last week. It's all about his tolerance of the pain involved in it. And he felt good enough to say, I want to go. And here he is. Tannehill had an incomplete pass to start, but since then has hit his last six in a row. Going for seven here and does. Over the middle, and that ball jarred loose. Charles Clay was hammered by Adrian Wilson, the five-time Pro Bowl safety. He'll watch as he comes down the middle of the field. I mean, there's no mistake. He's going to get hit, and I think that's a clean hit by Wilson. He goes sideways with his shoulder, hits him low. It sounded, you could hear the pop up here, but it was not helmet to helmet. That's an outstanding hit. Penalty markers all over. Quick snap. And they stop play. Welcome back, Scott. You, you, we, you've been busy today. Yeah. There's no play. Third down. And I don't I do not believe the officials were ready for play when they snapped. There's this. no flag on the play. We had stopped the play to get set for the next play. Yeah, you we see were the, the sufficiently ready. The umpire still standing right beside Tannehill. And it's a nice idea by Tannehill, but the officials will not let you snap the football until they're ready. Good idea by Tannehill, he just the officials wouldn't let him do it. Daniel Thomas has checked in. In the backfield with Tannehill, who will throw on third and seven. That is caught. Devon Bess with another nice pickup into Arizona territory, down to the 40. A gain of 14 yards. Jamel Fleming, the nickelback, made the stop. And right now, Ryan Tannehill is playing like a veteran. They're going to get a five-man rush. He steps back. Bess runs a nice route underneath to get a little hitch and go to the outside, and Tannehill has the time and the presence of mind to go to him late. Doesn't stare him down, goes to him on time. Three receptions for 51 yards for Bess already. Tannehill changing the play. Bush met at the line of scrimmage and driven back by Calais Campbell. Campbell, who played at Miami, where he ended his career at the U with 19 and a half sacks and almost 40 tackles for loss. Now you see there, Campbell pushes Jake Long past the play and stands right in the hole. Reggie Bush, I mean, Reggie Bush came to Miami to be a feature back, and he, he, he showed you something today, getting himself ready to play after a tough week last week. Play action. Lots of time to the sideline. That is caught by a hard line who just nabbed it out of the air. Patrick Peterson had good coverage. And this ball is in the air before Hartline comes out of his break. This is a dynamite throw by Tannehill. As I said, this offense in Miami kind of centers around Reggie Bush, and he wanted to be the guy, and his ability to run the football has given them the opportunity to develop Tannehill and let this offense evolve. So that's the end of the first quarter. Dolphins are driving and will return to Glendale, Arizona after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47. Ryan Tannehill, 8 of 10 for 86 yards. Impressive in that opening quarter. We'll throw it again, incomplete. A little behind Ryan Hartline. Let's take a look at this young man from Big Spring, Texas. Well, when you take a guy that high in the draft, there are certain things you know you're going to get. One is a good arm. 
you don't always know that he's going to be able to make good decisions, particularly at the speed of the NFL. But today, Tannehill has really found the open men and been able to deliver the football on target. Cardinals showing blitz. They run the slant incomplete. That's a little too much on that one for Devon Bess. Oh, he double clutched as well. Great, great presence of mind by Tannehill. Again, even in the incompletion watch, he wants to throw the football right away. The Cardinals step right in between him and Bess. He double clutches it and tries to fit it in the second window and almost gets it done. That is a snap decision that prevented a big play for the Cardinals and gave himself an opportunity. Miami converted a third and six twice and a third and ten in the first quarter five first downs in the opening quarter now facing third and ten empty backfield for Tannehill with time to the sideline that is caught by Hartline another first down Jamel Fleming the nickelback made the stop after a pickup of 12 huge cushion on the outside they know it's a long third down to pick up but that's cushion that Fleming you can't give Brian Hartline that much cushion, particularly with a quarterback that has a strong arm like Tannehill. He just zipped that out there, and before you can break on it, the ball's already completed. Hartline missed the preseason with a leg injury, came in as the Dolphins' leading receiver with 13 catches for 202 yards. Thomas. Tough running down close to the 13. And you could tell after that last third down conversion just a moment ago, the Cardinal defenders are standing up and looking at each other. They didn't believe that the Dolphins could come in and move the football on them, particularly with a rookie quarterback and their ability to stop the run. And there you see it. Time of possession and yards. The Dolphins are playing good football offensively. And threatening here, second and ten. <laughs> Deep into Arizona territory. They run the screen. They try to incomplete. Reggie Bush couldn't bring it in, and Tannehill had to get rid of it a little quicker than he wanted to. Yeah, that's the second time the Dolphins have tried to run a screen, and Arizona was all over. You get that a lot, particularly Arizona ended up in man coverage. And you see there, Daryl. Darrell Washington was watching Reggie Bush like a hawk, and it's up to those offensive linemen to get him away from the man he's supposed to be covering. But he sniffed that out. Miami's converted four of five third downs so far. Facing another. They have to get just inside the five for a fresh set of downs. Tannehill to the end zone. Incomplete. Peterson with excellent coverage. Well, I don't know. If, if this might be the decision. The worst decision Tannehill's made today, going right at Patrick Peterson in the heart line. Peterson's got him covered well. Tannehill might have been better served to look around the football field because that is a tough play. I know it's the one-on-one -on -one coverage. The Patrick Peterson may be the best athlete in the National Football League. It's tough to win that battle. From 32 yards out, Carpenter after a tough week last week, and that is to the left, but good. Just inside the left upright. So the Miami Dolphins come away with three points and they lead it. 13-15 left in the half. An impressive drive for the Dolphins against a very good Arizona defense. Results in the 32-yard field goal by Dan Carpenter, ready to put last week behind him after missing the overtime field goal that could have won it for the Dolphins. Seals that one out of the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 20. That's where Kevin Cobb and company will go back to work with 13-15 left to go in the half. Officially the 68th consecutive sellout here in Arizona. The Cardinals trying to extend their home winning streak going back to last season to eight games. And already with five plays, 10 yards plus on first down. To Powell. Brought down at the 22. Kevin Burnett made the stop. The Arizona Cardinals, a very different team than the one that went to the Super Bowl after the 08 season. That team, Steve, loaded with veterans, built around, of course, a dynamic offense led by Kurt Warner. This edition, the Cardinals centered around its young playmakers on defense with an offense that uh, is efficient, has, of course, the future Hall of Famer. But led by a quarterback who wasn't even the starter coming out of training camp, Kevin Cobb. 
Second and eight. Cobb <laughs> from the shotgun. Fitzgerald. The first down. Great second effort. Now to the 31. Cobb may not have been the starter coming out of training camp, but he knows where his bread is buttered. Larry Fitzgerald is going to draw attention wherever he goes. He catches this. Three Dolphins are right there to tackle him, but nevertheless, he shows why he's a guy who's caught 700 balls faster than any player in history. He just doesn't drop it. NFC Offensive Player of the Week for his performance last week against the Eagles. Nine catches for 114 yards. Williams to the 35. To pick up a four. Ryan Williams starting this week and uh, really bringing a different running style than Beanie Wells. He'll make more quick cuts, less of a power back than Wells, who is on the new injured reserve designated for return list, which means he could come back in late November. Make mistake. This is an opportunity Ryan Williams has been looking for in his second year. In Virginia Tech. from the pocket, checks it down to Williams, who was dropped immediately back at the 35. Then the outside linebacker, Kevin Burnett, made the stop. Burnett, in his eighth year out of Tennessee, came over from San Diego. This Arizona team, as you see there, Beanie Wells, a guy who's a strange new rule. I mean, he's going to be able to come back and play for the Arizona Cardinals later in the season. He'll be able to practice in six weeks. He'll be able to practice for a few weeks, and then he'll be able to be activated for maybe the last month or, se month or six weeks of the season, which is crucial if this team continues to play well. 56 for Will. It's Gerald. Third and six. Cobb keeps his feet, but they blew the whistle. Cameron Wake was in the backfield in a hurry. And this is one of those plays where if, if this would have happened two weeks ago, people would be up in arms. And I think that's a quick whistle. It's a quick whistle. You have to have grasp and control. And Cobb, get, once he gets his arms free, I don't think that's grasp and control. I think the Cardinals have a beef, but that's non-reviewable. That play is going to stand, and the Cardinals are going to be forced to kick it away. No question that the Dolphins got good pressure and had their hands all over Cobb, but I don't think he was under the control of the defensive lineman. Zastadil on the punt once again. And with this big pin. From the 20. And a marker is down after a nice return by Thigpen. James Sanders made the stop. Holding, receiving team, number 20, boarding the kick. Foul will be enforced from the end of the kick. Call that on Rashad Jones. Well, in our business, there are many hardworking people behind the scenes. Last Sunday night, after the day's NFL action, CBS lost one of the best in the business. There was no event too big, no job too small for Jack Shoemaker. Jack passed away last week. He is survived by three sons, four grandchildren, and a multitude of family, friends, and coworkers who will miss him. CBS is sponsored by the Samsung Galaxy S3. The next big thing is already here. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by National Car Rental. Go National. Go like a pro. We're back. 9.57 left to go in the half. Dolphins lead at 3-0. They take over first and 10 at their own 11-yard line. Lamar Miller's in the backfield. Short drop for Tannehill. That is caught. Bess with some running room and a first down. 
17 yards on the play. Well, Miami's breaking a tendency in this game. Tannehill was under center with two backs in the backfield, and he drops back for the quick pass. Usually, that is a run-heavy formation. I think the Cardinals were expecting it. They had eight guys. Look at all the guys are packed into the box, thinking this is going to be a run. Tannehill snaps it out for the quick throw in the good game. They run it on first down. Miller. Lamar Miller, the rookie fourth-round pick out of the University of Miami. Harris Lennon made the stop. Well, for the first time, Arnold Schwarzenegger speaks out about his scandal. Plus, Laura Logan with America's top commander in Afghanistan. The season premiere of 60 Minutes tonight, only CBS. It was good for seven yards on first down. Well, just short of the 35. Miller stays in the game. Quick strike to Hartline. Dropped after a pickup of three. Peterson and Wilson both there. Ryan Tannehill, a bright young man who majored in biology in getting his degree at Texas A&M with thoughts of going to medical school and perhaps one day being an orthopedic surgeon. You see there, he's trying to talk his offensive lineman and his the guys around him into making this third down and short. First timeout. So timeout on the field. The offense lead at 3-0. 822 left to go in the half. They spot it at the 37, so third and one facing the Miami Dolphins, who have been good on third down. And this is going to be close. Again, forward progress, a big hit by the linebacker, Paris Lennon. They didn't give it to him. They, they, they marked him well short of the 38-yard line. And you've got to get this. And this, I think, with Daniel Thomas carrying that football is an example of taking it easy on Reggie Bush, giving him a one less carry on a very physical, hard-hitting run. And how about that hit from Paris Lennon? He has been one of those unsung veterans who has done a tremendous job in solidifying this Arizona defense, and they're going to be short. Arizona getting a stop defensively. No question, the Dolphins have controlled the football by making first downs and hanging into possession. Only got three points out of everything, but they have not given Arizona an opportunity offensively to stay on the field. Their defense is stopping the run. And right now, the Dolphins are playing this game exactly the way they envisioned. Brandon Fields on to punt it away from his own 22-yard line to the always dangerous Patrick Peterson. From the 21, he bobbles it. And there's a marker down as well. Cardinals retain possession. We're not going to talk about dual possession. That's a moot point on this play. You can hear it. It's nice that there are seven officials and two players or three players. Still to the other way around. Peterson came out of the pile with the football. The Eagles block in the back. Receiving team during the kick. 10 yard penalty, number 27, first down. We call that on Michael Adams. Let's uh, look at the bobble. Well, Patrick Peterson's got such confidence. He's going to catch the football no matter what and make, try to make something happen. You see there, he has the ball. They pile on top of him. They're going to give him possession, and rightfully so. Right there, he should have it. Now, sometimes the strongest cat in there gets it. But Peterson, well, he's no shrinking vial. He came out of the foot, <laughs> out of the pile with the ball, and it's no fun to get caught in a loose ball pile in the NFL. So they spot it at the 11. And that's what will be first and 10 for Arizona. They trailed the Dolphins 3 0. Midway through the second. Cobb, right sideline. And a flag comes in. 
Fitzgerald was the intended receiver. He's working against Sean Smith up the sideline. This came from the back judge, the center of the football field. And I guess you can guess who that's going to go against. Interference, defense, number 24. Ball will be spotted at the spot of the foul. First down. They call that on Sean Smith. He's that big physical corner, 6'3", and battling Fitzgerald the entire way. Well, you can't touch him after five yards. And right there, he goes up and climbs him with his hands and puts his hands right on Larry Fitzgerald's chest and shoulders. And that's really what led to the incompletion. He wasn't playing the football at all, and that's an easy call. So 20-yard penalty, first and 10. To set. Brought down at the 34 by Jimmy Wilson. Wilson, the safety who plays in the dime. That was good for three yards. It's interesting as the season progresses and we all get a chance to see all the teams in the NFL play. These two teams are blessed with good defenses. And the first thing you notice is that they don't miss tackles. The guy catches the football and the first guy to the ball makes the play. And that's step one towards the great defenses. And both these teams have them. He was a star for the Cardinals in the preseason. Burnett made the stop. Ken Wisenhunt told us he's very comfortable with Powell in there running the football. First game he's been active this season. His first year out of Kansas State. That was good for two yards. Got a lot of ability. He was 5'9", 207 pounds. He's just the kind of prototypical back. A guy who can kind of hide in there behind the big offensive line, but still heavy and thick enough to power through some arm tackles. We're good. Cardinals one of four in third down conversion so far. Facing third and five. And down goes Cobb again. Cameron Wake. One of the league's best edge rushers came in without a sack after leading Miami with eight and a half last year, but he came in with 13 quarterback hurries. He has been outstanding. Well, one of the things about the Cardinals, they've got two new tackles. This is Bobby Massey. He's the fourth round draft pick this year. And sooner or later, as much help as you'd like to give young tackles, the Cardinals have two of them. You can't help both of them. So fourth and 13. Again, we'll see Zastadil. Big pick. Everybody off, lets it bounce, it takes a cardinal roll, and will be down inside the five. Well, the Miami defense has been tough. We've got a marker, by the way. So before we step aside, we'll check the penalty. Uh, I think what happened, the gunner, on the punt coverage team, stepped out of bounds and then was the first one to touch the ball. That's illegal. There is no foul. The ball uh, was down prior to the man coming in from out of bounds and touching it. Therefore, there is no foul on the play. First down. All right. Good explanation from Scott Green. 5.45 left to go in the half. NFL on CBS is sponsored by KFC. Delivered fresh. Prepared fresh with world-famous secret recipes. Come in today and taste why fresh is better. Long field for the Miami Dolphins as they take over. Deep in their own, own territory, Reggie Bush, the deep back. And they give it to number 22. Stutter step. He's free. Bush upended out across the 25 to the 26 yard line by Patrick Peterson after a gain of 21. Well, Reggie Bush, this is, uh, I got to tip my hat to him. He's going to come right in here. This is the kind of play that he came to Miami that people didn't believe he could make. Running hard up in between the tackles. And then, not only that, doing it on a week where he showed up injured on the day of the game and decided to play and gutted it out. Great play by Reggie Bush. 151 yards of offense. Bush still on his feet. Tremendous second effort 
And he's out to the 35-yard line, a gain of nine. Adrian Wilson made the tackle. 160 yards total offense for Miami, now 36 for the Cardinals. Right. Comes off limping a little bit. He's going to take a break, but this is, you know, the problem is he, if you want to be a feature back, you might get what you ask for, and it's hard to do. And they give it to the big man up front, Javorski Lane. Richard Bush, I think there's no question he's got the ability. We saw him be a route runner and pass catcher in New Orleans in his career there, came to Miami wanting to be a more, a bigger part of the offense in the running game and did that very well last year. His question is, as a feature back, you have to show up every week. And this is one of those weeks where it was difficult for him to do it, and he's come through for him. Lane able to pick up the first down. Tannehill going deep. Hard line. There's a flag down. And let's see if it's offensive or defensive pass interference. William Gay had the coverage. There was no question there was contact during this route that allowed Hartline to get separation. Now, whether it was against him or the defender remains to be seen. The players are moving down the field. It looks like they're going to pick the flag up. Illegal contact. Defense number 22. Penalty is declined. First down. Hartline put a move on Gay. Watch right here. Wow. Great move. You saw him stutter his feet, look to the sideline, and William Gay thought he was going to run the out route, and that is a sensational route and a great throw by Tannehill. Big game for Hartline. Five catches for 91 yards. And the Dolphins have marched it right down the field. Thomas, the deep back, they give it to him. A tough yard. Down to the six on first and goal. Calais Campbell made the tackle. When you talk about the man coverage that the Cardinals are playing, it frees up a lot of guys to get into the box and get after Tannehill. And on the outside, if you're going to play man-to-man -man coverage, the receivers, all they need is you don't have to outrun those guys, but you have to fool them. And on that play, the big play, Hartline fooled Gay and put him down deep in Cardinals territory. Reggie Bush is back in the game. Play action. Tannehill sacked. O'Brien Schofield with tremendous penetration. And Tannehill, Tannehill had nowhere to go. A loss of 14. Well, I don't think the Dolphins believed how athletic the Cardinal defense is. Schofield sees the play fake and has the presence of mind and the ability to put his foot in the ground and recover from biting on the play fake. And he's so field swiped his leg out from under him and got the big sack. Play clock winding down. And Miami will have to take a timeout. What a stand by the Arizona defense. Third and goal upcoming from near the 20. Fourth and goal from the one, and the Dolphins apparently are going to go for it. You like this call, Steve? I do. If they don't get it, the Cardinals have a two-minute drill from inside their five-yard line, and if they do get a touchdown here, they get a 10-point lead with a really good defense on the road. Big Javorski Lane is the deep back. And they give it to the J train, and he pulls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Great play call, great execution, great job coaching by Joe Philbin. That's the right call at the right time. The book says to take the field goal on the road, but I think when you're inside the two, you got a, a defense as good as the Dolphins have. Go for it and give this defense a 10-point lead at halftime. And you got a big back that you can hand it to. That's a pretty good play call right there. Javorski Lane is the rookie fullback who played with Tannehill and for Mike Sherman at Texas A&M, 5'11", 260. He's been up over 300 pounds. Carpenter boots the extra point through. And the Dolphins are in the end zone. 
156 left to go in the half. 10 nothing, Miami. The Cardinals kept the Eagles out of the end zone a week ago. In fact, they came in allowing just two touchdowns all season. And that was the first touchdown they've given up on the ground since week 17 of last season. Seattle's Leon Washington broke one from 48 yards. But they have been tough to run against, especially in the red zone. And Miami able to find the end zone. They lead it 10 0. Powell will take a knee nine yards deep in the end zone. Kevin Cobb coming out. 156 to work with. And coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, join JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights from a busy week four. That's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Ryan Tannehill has been impressive. 13 of 19 for nearly 200 yards in the first two quarters. Slings it out close to a first down to Michael Floyd, the rookie. Spotted right at the 30, so first and 10. Clock continues to run. Arizona has two timeouts left. Tom again with time. And again, right at the marker. And again, it's Michael Floyd. Still running, 120 left to go in the half. First and 10 from the 40. Cardinals trying to get something going on offense against this stingy Miami defense. And again, it's Floyd. The kicker, Jay Feely, has a long career, long of 55 yards. So they've still got another 20, 25 yards to get to get to that point. For an attempt. William Carroll made the stop after a pickup of five. Cobb. And that's caught for another first down into Miami territory. And now they'll take their first time out or their second time out of the half. Andre Roberts with the pickup of seven. Timeout on the field. Jay Feely with a career long of 55 yards. He's done that four times. Actually kicked for the Dolphins back in 2007. That year hit 21 of 23. They're 11 yards away from his outer range. How perfect on this drive. Four of four for 32 yards. Getting everyone set. And brought down with 27 seconds left in the half. And this is a bad decision by Cobb to throw to the outside. He had a player right down the middle of the field, wide open, trying to fit it into his best player, Larry Fitzgerald. And Sean Smith does a great job of forcing Fitzgerald to alter his route enough that it throws the timing of the route off. And Cobb makes the throw, an ill-advised throw. Great job by Smith to force Larry Fitzgerald to alter his route twice before he could get up the field. 31-yard return. Dolphins with one timeout left and 27 seconds on the clock. And they have stunned the Cardinals here in the first half. Arizona showing blitz, and here they come. Tannehill gets rid of it. And that's caught by his tight end, Fisano. A gain of eight. And now Miami will take a timeout. There's actually a Cardinal down on the field. Oh, I got you. It's Paris Lennon being helped up near the 40. Discharge the last timeout. Yeah, and that's going to cost Arizona their last timeout because of an injured player inside two minutes.
on Kevin Cobb to an interception was October 30th of last year. Jamil McLean intercepted him in the third quarter of Arizona's tough 30-27 loss in Baltimore. And even that interception was, he got hit on his arm as the ball came out. It was kind of a lame interception. Still counts, but Kevin Cobb's not a guy that usually makes a throw like he just did. Dolphins still with a timeout. 14 seconds left in the half. Tannehill. Bess inside the 10. And they will take that final timeout. Kerry Rhodes made the stop, a gain of 18. And uh, Ryan Tannehill has learned very early how to stand in the pocket and beat teams from the middle of the field. This is a throw by Best where Tannehill's got people crashing in all around him, stands tall and waits for Best to come across the face of the defender. Watch how he stands in the pocket, keeps his eyes on the defense, not on the rush, and delivers that at the last possible moment. That is a big time play by a young quarterback as he watches, looks to his right, then he comes back and sees best coming across it doesn't get any better than that fourth game in the league or not Ryan Tannehill was masterful here late in the first half and he is over 200 yards 15 of 21 for 219 so we will see Dan Carpenter on to try the field goal and 27 yards away again tight to the left but good and the Dolphins extend their lead to 13 to nothing. Miami came into Phoenix two days ago on Friday. Joe Philbin giving him an extra little bit of time to get acclimated, not only to the heat, but also the time change. And look at the numbers. Came in averaging 193.7 per game already at 199. Well, Tuesday on CBS, see why Vegas is the number one new show on television. And if you have it on your DVR, watch it soon. Vegas, only CBS. Well, this... Three seconds remaining in the half, and these fans are stunned here in Arizona. I think the Cardinals are a little stunned. I don't think they're happy with the way they played because as a player, as a Cardinal, you, you kind of don't give the other team credit. You kind of point the finger at yourself. The Cardinals know they need to play better, and the Dolphins, this game has unfolded exactly the way they planned it. William Powell, here's the line drive kick. Finds him running around the outside, and he's spun out of bounds as time expires. Terrific first half for the rookie out of Texas A&M, Ryan Tannehill. 219 yards. We'll be back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message. And a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Third and a long 13. As we come back to Arizona. Miami already leading it 13 to nothing. Tannehill, the rookie. And that was almost picked off. Had a miscommunication with Devon Bess. And Greg Toller almost had a pick six. Well, Tannehill finally makes a false move here. He's been playing mistake free, and as he sees Calais Campbell come in, almost looks like he got hit in the face mask as he released this. But it looks like he was counting on Devon Best to hook his route up to the outside, and Best continued to the sideline. So a 51-yard field goal try from Carpenter. Misses it to the right. So no points for the Dolphins on their opening possession of the second half. The missed field goal from 51 yards out.
NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Scott Trade. See for yourself why so many investors are saying, I'm with Scott Trade. And by the all-new Dodge Dart. Dodge. New rules. Arizona takes over. Good field position from their own 41 after the missed field goal. Cobb. Lots of time. Guns it to Fitzgerald. And he has a first down. Pickup of 12. Arizona going to go no huddle here after the catch, but Fitzgerald, what they do so much is they move him around. You see there, Roberts right behind him. They come off in tandem, which allows them to get a free release. Now he's at the bottom of the screen down here. They'll move him all over the football field to get different matchups and make it difficult for the defense to find him. Jenkins showing blitz. Newman Powell in the backfield. The extra protection. And that is underthrown, intended for early Doucette. That's a throw that you were right. It was underthrown. And now the Cardinals with that will, will huddle up. As you see here, that's a big difference. They were ranked 31st coming in, and it's gotten worse. Have been a tough defense to run on. They held the Jets to just 88 yards and the Raiders 23 yards in week two. Cobb keeps his feet, buys some time. And that is caught for a first down. Rob Hausler, the acrobatic tight end, has been quiet today. A gain of 15. And this is the kind of play that Cobb has to make to get this team back into the game. They cannot afford not to make plays when they're there. And if they're not going to bring him down, he's got to create outside the pocket. Dolphins are getting a good push up front on those rookie tackles or the young first-year tackles. And Cobb has got to overcome that deficit. Randy Stark supplied the pressure but couldn't wrap him up. So first down for the Cardinals. Bobbled. And he did not have possession when he went out of bounds. Andre Roberts. And that was an easy call for the official. Roberts comes down, bobbles it twice, and then his knee comes down, and he re re finally gains possession. And those are the plays Arizona has to make to get back in this football game. Nine catches for 111 yards, a couple of touchdowns coming in, but he's been quiet today. Second and ten. Dolphins lead it 13 nothing. Cobb going deep. Nice adjustment of the ball by Roberts. And that time he makes the catch. And Ken Wisenhunt told us Roberts has not really blossomed yet, but he has done it in practice, and they've got a lot of faith in his ability. Had a step on Nolan Carroll. So first and goal. A good-looking drive here early in the second half for Arizona. And that was a great adjustment by Roberts to make that catch. When you go for Cam. It's Jared in motion. Cobb throws it behind Fitzgerald, and that was nearly picked off. And that was a little mistiming as well. Fitzgerald comes out of motion. They line him up in the backfield. Then he finally goes out and splits out wide. Watch as he stops. Then he's going to continue on as the defender jumps the hitch route. If Cobb would have given him a quarter of a second and put the ball on him, that was a touchdown. And Richard Marshall would have had an interception, but he went over to look at Fitzgerald and took his eye off the ball. So the Cardinals keep it going. Second and goal. Fitzgerald in the slant down inside the five. Sean Smith, the first one there to bring him down. And this, this offense going a lot to the short pass. It's good for Kevin Cobb because it gets the ball out of his hand. And one reason they're doing it is because of the pressure the Dolphins are putting on Cobb. Cobb can't hang on to the football. So they've got to go to these quick passes to make sure they give themselves a chance for a catch and a missed tackle and a big play. Seven plays in this drive, all passes. Third and goal for Arizona. Cobb 
Fitzgerald, and he walks it in. Larry Fitzgerald lined up at every position on the field except offensive line and quarterback. Now he's everywhere on this drive. Now he's at the top of the screen, inside coverage there by Smith. Great job by Early Doucette, and then the big guy comes out. That's Batiste. The left tackle comes out and bulldozes Larry into the end zone. Good-looking drive from the Arizona Cardinals, and they are on the board with 9.46 left to go in the third. 13-7 now, Miami. Cardinals just about doubled their offensive output in that one drive. 59 yards after just 68 total yards in the first two quarters. And Larry Fitzgerald with the three-yard touchdown reception. All of those eight plays were pass plays as well. And that'll tell you something about their second-half plan coming out of halftime and making some adjustments. Feely. Big pin brings it out. And tripped up at the 16. Well, to get the latest news, analysis, and predictions from Jason LaCanfora, Pat Kerwin, and other CBS Sports experts, watch Pro Football 360 live weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern or on demand at cbssports.com slash profootball360. So young Ryan Tannehill. And the Dolphins will try to answer the touchdown drive by the Arizona Cardinals. Miami leading it 13 to 7, 941 left to go in the third. Reggie Bush is the lone back. Play action. Tannehill, all kinds of time. And that is caught again by Bess. And let's check in with the fellas in New York for a week four update. Shannon, no Eric Decker slide here. No, JB, I told Peyton to do an extra set of dips this week to strengthen that tricep. He does. Second touch passing touchdown on the day. Oh, the Broncos have gone in again, Jim. My bad. 23 feet. The Broncos are rolling. Bill and Steve. JB, Shannon, thank you. Both those teams came in at one and two, both needing a win here early in the season. Bush reverses his field, tries to get to the outside and can't do it. Toller with the tackle. And that's that's how difficult it is to run on Arizona's defense, and that's why the, the Dolphins were so intent and they were so poised on how Reggie Bush was going to be able to play. He's played well. He looks like he's running well. But this Arizona defense is poised to stop him. They tried to put the game in the hands of Tannehill. And right now, that looks like a mistake because P Tannehill has picked him apart. After the four-yard loss, second and 14, Tannehill. And that's picked off. Adrian Wilson. go with an injury and pulls that one in that ball might have moved when he hit the ground that ball got tipped it looked like and watch right here does the ball move in his grasp you can't tell from that angle getting the undercut of that route great grab ball might have moved when he hit the ground They're going to review this. So a timeout on the field for the review. 8-18 left to go in the third. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Warner Brothers Pictures Argo. In theaters everywhere October 12th. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. back Scott Green.
Green coming out after taking a look at the play. And well, this, let's think, take a look at that. This is the best angle. I think this is going to be reversed. When he comes down, this ball moves in his hands right there and bounces off the turf. And that, after reviewing the play, the ball was incomplete. It hit the ground between the defender's hands. It'll be third down. Ball will be on the 28-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 821. So they wave off the interception. And it's the right call. Wilson made a great play on it, but when he hit the ground, he, he lost his grip on the football, and that constitutes an incomplete pass. And Tannehill gets one back, and so do the Dolphins. And if that play had gone through, that the whole momentum of this game had shifted. And what looked to be a game where the Dolphins were had a stranglehold on this game with that last drive of the Cardinals, and if that play would have stood, the Dolphins would have been in trouble. Miami has to go to the 43-yard line for a first down. Third and 14. Bush is in the backfield with Tannehill. Play clock down inside of five. They get it off. Tannehill lost it incomplete. And there's a flag down and another. This is going to be on Heartline. This is not going to go the way of the Dolphins. There were two flags on this. Both officials saw it. It looked like Heartline. Oh, they are going to go against Arizona. Interference. Defense, number 28. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And they call it on Toller. And it looked to me from, from high above, this was going to go on Heartline. Right there, is, that's what I saw. And wow. First down for the Dolphins from their own 46. Bush sneaks his way to midfield. Dan Williams made the tackle. Once again, Bush gets the ball ripped out of his hands before the or after the whistle. It's, the Cardinals are a, nothing if not a nasty, tough bunch of defenders. They're very opportunistic. Wisenhunt, I, this is the, I think when he took over as Arizona's head coach, this is the team that he envisioned having, a defensive club. Now, the club he took to the Super Bowl, no question, it was lightning in a bottle. They had Kurt Warner, and they got it. But I think this is more of a personality of the team that fits his coaching style. Miller. Battles for a couple. Acho made the stop. You and I discussed this yesterday. And it really does seem to fit his personality. They are a quiet, intelligent bunch in Arizona. There's Joe Philbin as a guy who's much the same. I and mean, this is a guy who's ready to be a head coach as well. We spoke to him yesterday, too. The thing that he said about the Cardinal defense was they are very physical and very fast. Third and four. Tannehill has been good on third down. Cardinals showing blitz. They back out of it. Tannehill, though, able to get it away somehow, but lost it out of bounds. And another marker down, close to midfield. And that is a big, strong arm for the quarterback. He threw that a long way off one leg. Vonnie Holiday had the pressure. This is going to be against the Dolphins. Interference. Offense. Number 22. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. I'll call that on Reggie Bush. Cardinals declined the penalties. Miami will punt. Peterson trying to get him fired up. and four for Miami. Peterson standing back in his own ten. Fields, another fine punt. Peterson makes the fair catch at the three. The 
44 yard punt. And let's go back and look at the previous play. Here's the penalty down right there. That's illegal. Reggie Bush kind of knocks the defender, Peterson, off of Hartline. You can't do that. You can rub, make defenders run into themselves, but you can't run into them yourself and block down the field as a receiver. Bush, that was a good catch by the official. Bush fairly contained by this Arizona defense. Ten carries for 35 yards. The story of the day has been Ryan Tannehill, 18 of 28 for 272. But the Cardinals... Only down by six. Deep in their own territory. From their own three. Williams fights to get out of the end zone. Carlos Dansby, who went to Miami after six years here in Arizona, made the stop. Now this is where the Cardinals are really going to struggle with two new starting offensive tackles. The right tackle, Bobby Massey, is a rookie. De'Anthony Batiste is playing his first year as a left tackle. And when you're down in this end, this close to your own goal line, this is when it's so hard to drop back and throw out of your own end zone because the ball has to come out. Back up almost on the goal line. Top. They're on the slant to Fitzgerald, incomplete. Smith had the coverage, no flag. And you see there, once again, Cobb has got to release it. They put a tight end outside the left tackle to give him more protection. Fitzgerald comes in and gets a good jump. That ball is low and away, and it's just too tough to catch. And that's a good no call. Great defensive play by Smith. He can't do it any better than that. And if they can stop him here, Miami will have great field position. When Smith came out of the game. They got caught without enough players on the field. So the Dolphins take another timeout. 5.48 left to go in the third. Sean Smith, the big cornerback after limping off the field over on the Miami sideline. Cardinals with the ball inside their own two, facing third and 12. Empty backfield for Cobb. Four yards deep in the end zone. They run the slant. Doucette dropped well short of the first down. Well, gives them an opportunity to punt the ball away from a full formation. That's really the important thing for the Dolphins at that point. Just make sure nothing catastrophic happens when you're backed up that deep. For the Arizona Cardinals not to have a catastrophic miscue. The shot Jones, Steve, closed in a hurry. So Marcus Thigpen, who had a 72-yard punt return for a touchdown in week one against Houston, stands back at his own 41. Zastadil able to get that away. Thigpen thought about fielding it, stepped away. It takes an Arizona bounce and will be down at the 34. Ryan Tannehill, the rookie out of Texas A&M, eighth selection overall in the draft last April, and he has done a nice job today against a tough Arizona defense. Yeah, he's had, a, if, if he was an elite quarterback in the league, he's having a good day. For a guy in his fourth game, he's been outstanding. Very poised. And he did more than just manage this game. He, he's not just a, a guy who's not hurting his team. He's actually contributing in a big way to what looks to be, a, a, at this point, a lead and on their way to victory. Nearing 300 yards, and after a great punt by Zastadil, Miami gets it short of their 35. Tannehill. Front line. First down. That was good for 11 yards. Hartline coming all the way from the outside, motioning down, going underneath the tight end, across the formation. He has had an enormous day, as we've been talking about. Nine catches for 157 yards for Hartline. Thomas is the deep back. First and 10 for the Miami 45. They give it to Thomas. Knee touches down 
Close to the 48, a pickup of three. It's been a while since the Dolphins have had two receivers go over 100 yards. Over since, a decade. Yes, since they played Buffalo late in November of 2001. Hartline with 157, Devon Best with 103. Second and seven. Tannehill shifts back to the shotgun. And here come the Cardinals. They pick up the blitz. Tipped incomplete. And once again, let's check in with JB and Shannon in New York for an update on the Raiders and the Broncos. Shannon said nothing's wrong with Manny. Yeah, he's been doing tricep press down, JB, here. Lance Ball. Peyton Manning, 24-30, 295, his third touchdown of the day, 31-6 Broncos. I can see he's a martial arts guy. You said tricep push down? Yeah, press down. All right, press down. Press Back down. to Bill. Ed Steve. <laughs> Broncos seemingly on their way to two and two. Dolphins would like to do the same. Third and seven. Tannehill. Intercepted. Greg Toller, who's been all over the field. They rule him down at the 39. Looks look like Hartline at the top of your screen is going to try and come out of his break and just slip and fall down. And that leaves... That leaves him nobody there except Toler. And that's something that's going to happen to any quarterback, let alone a young one. But Tannehill's got to release that ball when he does. And you, if your receiver's going to fall down, you're going to get picked off a lot. You can't put that on Tannehill. He's going to expect his guy to win on the outside and give him the chance to make a play. And Hartline lost his footing and it ended in the, going the other direction. That's the danger of a timing route. So big turnover for Arizona. They take over first and ten. 342 left to go in the third. Ryan Williams again nowhere to go. Yeah. You know, the only scoring drive to speak of that's happened for the Cardinals has been the one where they threw the football on every play. And they continue to try and keep the Dolphins honest in the run game, but the Dolphins are a brick wall right now in the run game defensively. Arizona. They are really good against it. Steve Arizona with just 19 yards on the ground. Second and nine. They spread them out. Empty backfield. Cardinals trail by six. Incomplete. Fitzgerald, the intended receiver. You know, it's interesting about this Cardinals team. They're trailing here at home against the Dolphins, but this is a team that has been in four overtime games, won them all. They've won a lot of home games, and they are used to being in tight ball games. Those were, these are most of the club, most of the guys on this roster, as Wisenhunt told us, are the same guys that went one and six to begin last year, and now are 10 and 2 over their last 12 games. So far, they've done a good job on Larry Fitzgerald. Five catches with just 31 yards. He had the touchdown. Third and nine. Cobb on the move. Fitzgerald. And he's got a first down just into Miami territory. Yeah, this is a, a game. And the reason I say all that about those overtime games, this is a situation that will not phase the Arizona Cardinals. You have to wonder about how the Dolphins are going to fare. They lost an overtime game just a week ago. They haven't had much success in these situations with a new quarterback. The Cardinals are used to this. And Fitzgerald, the veteran play, finds the soft spot in that Miami secondary. Uh, again, Fitzgerald. Close to the 35. 13 yards on the play. Every time you see the Cardinals play, this happens. And you wonder, does anybody else outside Arizona know that Larry Fitzgerald's got 700 catches? <laughs> They're going to throw him the football a lot. you got to get more than one guy on him. Cobb, incomplete, intended for the rookie Floyd. I mean, once in a while, Cobb goes to somebody else. But really, this offense, and we've seen it all day, Larry Fitzgerald lines up everywhere across the line of scrimmage. 
And he's the focal point of the passing game, and for good reason. And as, whatever the rest of the receivers can give this offense is going to help Larry Fitzgerald as well as Cobb. Fitzgerald, the youngest player at 29 in NFL history to reach 700 career receptions, and there's a flag before the snap. Full start. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty. Second down. DeAnthony Baptiste, the left tackle. Seventh year out of Louisiana Lafayette. He won the starting job late in camp. You see there him tapping his chest saying, my bad, guys. We got it. Wasn't said this is a close-knit group. The Cardinals are 3-0 for a reason. They really have gotten contributions from all over their roster. And guys take responsibility for their own mistakes, and it really makes for a great culture. Cobb on second and 15. And just lost it out of bounds. Third and 15. This is going to be Batiste who gets beat off the edge. You see, he got a handful there as Vernon comes off the edge. Cobb has to roll out to get away from the pressure and ends up in the incompletion. Once again, the Dolphins' pressure working off the edges of this inexperienced offensive line of the Cardinals. Third and 15, Cameron Wake has three sacks today, all three coming on third down. From the 41, Cobb. And that was a bullet early to set the intended receiver. There was some contact right when the ball got there, but not enough to draw the flag. Some contact is right. Doucette gets whacked as this ball flies past him. And that, you know, you can't tell me Nolan Carroll is playing the football. Because if he was, he would be running the other way with an interception. So the Cardinals will have to punt after the incomplete pass. Devon Vest standing back at the 10. Vestadil has done a good job today. Short punt fielded. The fair catch made at the 16. Nobody knows the game like a quarterback. Don't miss Phil Sims, Rich Gannon, Steve Berline, and special guest Dan Marino on NFL Monday Quarterback. That's tomorrow. 24-hour home of CBS Sports. But inside the 20, it went over only 24 yards, but they spot it at the 17-yard line, and that's where the Miami Dolphins will take over first and 10, 133 left to go in the third. Bush is the deep back, and they give it to Reggie Bush. Starts back inside, and a nice pickup. On first down, four first down to the 29. O'Brien Schofield made the stop after a gain of 12. Well, this is a great job on the offensive line of the Dolphins. They're going to get a seam right in here, and Reggie Bush is going to follow the fullback in and then just pick his spot as he takes that little hop up into the hole. The Cardinals collapse inside, and he's able to bounce around for the game. Tannehill. Hartline. Another nice pickup. Toller made the stop. And for Miami, they've got to continue to run their complete offense. They, it's way too early for them to go into a, any kind of offensive shell. They've got to continue to let Tannehill spread his wings and throw balls just like he did. Got a strong arm. Let get the ball out of his hand and let him fit it in. They have done a nice job of asking him to carry this game, particularly against a good run defense, and Tannehill's been coming through. They've got to continue to depend on him. 20 of 32 for 291. Flip it back to Bush. Has trouble just fielding the ball. Acho was all over that. Sam Acho in his second year out of the University of Texas. Now this play had no chance. Acho was all over whether he could field that pitch or not. That's the end of the third quarter. We'll return to Glendale, Arizona after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47.
ready to start the final quarter. Third down for the Dolphins. Reggie Bush in the first half carried six times for 39 yards. Here in the second half, six carries for minus one. Thomas is in the game in the backfield with Tannehill. And he is sacked. Adrian Wilson, the five-time Pro Bowl safety. Yeah, this is a jailbreak. Wilson comes right up the middle and just blows Thomas up in the backfield. Daniel Thomas, he's going to try and pick the safety up in the middle, and he just can't get it done. Wilson just blows him up and gets hands up right into the face of Tannehill. Brandon Fields on the punt, standing back inside the five. Patrick Peterson will have some room. Bobbles the ball. Loses it again. Peterson fumbling twice on one play. But the Cardinals retain possession. Mr. Cortez is ready to go if you need him. <laughs> Came ready to play. <laughs> so from the 42-yard line, Cardinals take over, trailing by six. 15-11 left to go. You know what I'm saying? Arizona trying to remain unbeaten with their record of 4-0. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. Richard Marshall got up in the air to knock it away. Back a few moments ago with the punt, Peterson. I got to tell you, I've done this in the league, and it's you got to have so much confidence. I mean, Patrick Peterson has bobbled punts all day. He's dropped a couple of times. And to have the confidence to go out there and still catch that and try and make something happen after bobbling it again, it, it just bespeaks how confident the guy is that he can make something happen. Second and ten for the Cardinals. And again, Cobb goes down. Carlos Dansby. Uh, the former Cardinal he was getting a chance. Originally the Cardinals second round draft pick back in 2004. Taken 33rd overall and here's how he got there. A clear path. He was in coverage on Ryan Williams and Ryan Williams didn't release to go to the pass so he took a chance on getting to the quarterback before Cobb could find Williams and give him the football. Three to one, three to one. Fourth sack for Miami. A loss of nine to third and 19 for Arizona. Cobb and sacked again. And guess who? Cameron Wake. Well, the Cardinals offensive line is overmatched right now. And two, two plays where they knew they had to throw the football. The Dolphins won one-on-one -on -one matchups. One with a great play by Dansby. And then, as you said, Cameron Wake just coming off the edge of the rookie right tackle and getting home. Four sacks for Cameron Wake, who has come alive today. Javon Best is back deep. He makes the fair catch at the 22. And let's take a look at Cameron Wake today after the 51-yard punt. his first sack. Regal Blue, so that was number two. Wraps up top. But there's no question. It was four sacks now. All on third down. And a career high for Cameron Wake. Dolphins take over. First and ten for their own 22. Bush. Forced to cut it back inside and stacked up after a pickup of one. Calais Campbell made the stop. Well, there's no question that's a key element of this game is the success that the Cardinal defense has had. Excuse me, the Miami defense has had against 
the Cardinal offense, and now the Cardinal defense has got to do something to get this football back in the hands of Kevin Cobb. Dolphins with 318 total yards compared to 143 for Arizona. Second and nine. Here comes Arizona. Tannehill gets rid of it. Caught by Fasano. Close to the first down marker. It'll be a yard short. Greg Toller made the tackle. This is Fasano split out as a wide receiver working against the smaller Toller for a quarterback, so you know he can cover him. The question is, is he big enough to tackle him? He got it done on that play. This quick hit sets up a third and short. Thomas behind Javorski Lane. They give it to Lane. And he rumbles close to the first down. And he looked, looks like he made it. And I'm not so sure now with that spot. The 32 is the line to gain. And that looks to be there. It looks like he got it. Because he doesn't go down easy. And they marked him shy of the 32 yard line. Well shy. I don't know. I don't agree with the spot. I think. I think he got more yardage than that, and they're not going to give him the first down. It is possible that Philbin could, he can challenge that, and they could respot it, but it would be difficult to see from the replay. And I think it's smart not to. It has to be, it would have to be indisputable evidence, and they're just not going to get it. So that will bring up fourth down, and we'll see the punting unit. Patrick Peterson <laughs> saying a little prayer. He's bobbled a couple of them. Well, the key for the Cardinals on this play is whatever happens, they've got to end this play with the football in their hands. They can't turn it back over to the Dolphins. Fields boots it away. Peterson with room. And the flag comes in. As Peterson is upended near the 28-yard line by Jonathan Freeney. 28-yard punt. Illegal block in the back, number 29, during the return. 10-yard penalty, first down. They call that on Alfonso Smith, just resigned this week. 11-12 left to play 13-7 Miami. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx. FedEx does more than shipping. FedEx, solutions that matter. TD Ameritrade. And by State Farm. Get to a better state with a discount double check. Eighty one yards to go for Arizona. They trail by six. First and ten from the nineteen yard line for the Cardinals. Ryan Williams, the deep back. They give it to him on first down. And second year out of Virginia Tech. Second round pick last year. We've talked about Patrick Peterson going back as a regular down and distance player. He's got more important things to worry about than exactly how deep he's got to stand. So Jay Feely says, hey, right here, double checks the depth so he, so he doesn't have to run either forward or backward and make the punt more difficult to field. Gets a little help from Jay Feely as to where he should drop back to catch those punts. Second and eight. Williams, 19 yards on seven carries. Avoids the rush in the seam. Hausler into Miami territory. Chris Clemens made the stop after a pickup of 33 yards. Larry Fitzgerald with a little head bang celebration. What a nice crisp throw from Cobb. Maximum protection. They keep two tight ends in to protect. 
and Cobb, quick play action and then a snap throw to Hausler. And that ball has to come out there as well as the Dolphins got some guys running free on Cobb right then as well. Hausler starting to find his way into this Arizona offense. and get the seam route. Feely with the extra point. And the Arizona offense comes to life. 46 yards. Cobb to Andre Roberts. And for the first time, Arizona leads it. 14-13. to the tight end Rob Hausler then the 46 yard touchdown pass from Cobb to Andre Roberts and the Cardinals lead it with 945 left to play 14 to 13 kicked out of the end zone they'll bring it out to the 20 as we said a moment ago both tackles at the end of this play as the pass develops get help Batiste from the guard. Here's the pocket. Now watch as the guard will come out and help him as this play develops. And the running back is here behind the offensive line to help them protect on the other side. And then the seam route right down past the former Cardinal, Marshall, gets the touchdown. Tannehill has been outstanding. Let's see how he responds. Here come the Cardinals. Tannehill, flushed from the pocket, finally throws it away. Dan Williams and Bonnie Holiday had the pressure. Great coverage down the field as Tannehill drops back. Really no play action. Looking his, looking the defense over right away. Then has to run for cover as because of the route and the pattern that they called, nobody was in position to come help him when he scrambled to his right. Had he scrambled to the other side, he might have had a chance. Holiday, the former Dolphin, that 17 and a half sacks in a Miami uniform. They keep it on the ground, Lamar Miller. And this Arizona defense and this crowd are pumped up. Darrell Washington, who's been quiet today, made the stop. Yeah, for the first time today, this defense of Arizona is playing with a lead, slim as it is. They've got finally got the momentum in their corner, and the crowd is really becoming a factor. Third and eight. Tannehill changing the protection. They get the play off. Caught. Bess. And out of bounds at the 42. Pushed out by Kerry Rhodes. And this is all Tannehill. He changed the protection. You see the pressure come right off. Bess runs the little juke route, which we saw early in the first half for a completion, and gets the completion. That's Tannehill making sure he's protected. He alerts the offensive line. They still don't have enough protectors, and yet it gives him enough time to get the pass away. Tannehill over 300 yards. First down for Miami. Lots of time. Slings it. And let's see if they rule this an interception. It is Peterson. Patrick Peterson. Stopped just short of the goal line. Whoa. 
what a turnaround. Well, as you see, this is Nene coming across the field. He catches this. As he puts it away, he loses his handle on it. So this is a catch fumble. And Patrick Peterson is the last guy the Dolphins want with his hands on the football. And Tannehill goes over and does enough to get him down inside the five before he scores. Legadu Nane was the intended receiver. The only chance that you would have as a Dolphin is if they say Nene didn't tuck it away and have possession of it. It could be an incomplete pass, but it doesn't Previous seem... Previous play is under review. Watch here. Does he have it enough? Well, so from what we've seen so far, there's not enough to overturn this fumble return. Well, it looked like he had both feet on the ground and two hands on the ball and then began to stumble, and that's when the ball came loose. I don't think there's enough to overturn that. Obviously, is in that gray it's, area. It's whether very or not gray area. You see, he pinches it right there, and he pulls it apart. I don't know that he had total control of it, but I don't know that we can see enough to overturn what was called on the field. He had both feet on the ground, but I don't know that he actually had possession of the football. And you talk to the officials, and they will tell you that if... Your momentum carries you forward, and you do not retain possession. Then it's an incomplete pass. Now, whether that's the case there or not, I could see can't this. Tell. Go, I could see this literally going either way. This is a coin flip to me because I don't know that he did enough with the football control of the football to say that he finished the catch, that he finished the process of catching the football. Such an important call and. Obviously taking their time, and now Scott Green is ready to tell us the verdict. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. We'll see if I have possession of the ball, turned up field, then lost possession. A 61-yard return from Peterson, first and goal for Arizona. Well, they say he caught the ball and turned up field. And that little hesitation with both feet on the ground is all it took for that play to go 61 yards the other direction. And that play was huge. On the three, first and goal. Williams. Not much there. And this is the Cardinals team that knows firsthand how important it is that they did not get in. Last week, Kerry Rhodes made an incredible tackle on the one-yard line, and it looked like it was all but over in the first half of the Philadelphia Eagles were going to punch it in for at least some points. And the next play, the Cardinals forced a fumble that was returned 93 yards for a touchdown. So the Cardinals know this is not a given. They give him a yard, so... Second and goal from the two. Trying to get Fitzgerald open. He's well covered. And let's see if that's intercepted. They rule it an interception. Sean Smith and a touchback. And there you have it. Anything can happen when you don't get those points right away. The Cardinals were forced to run a couple of plays. Larry Fitzgerald winds up, and you see there Smith pushes him. Now Larry Fitzgerald's ineligible, and Smith, what a great grab. And that, you see the ball touch the ground? That is still going to be an interception because he doesn't lose control of that football. He still, to me, grabs that ball and pinches it. You can have the ball touch the ground if it doesn't move in his grip. That looks to me like he keeps a pretty good pinch on that football once, even though it hits the ground. There's no question they'll have to review this. 
So timeout on the field. They'll take a look. It's 14-13 Cardinals. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by NFL Mobile from Verizon. Built to bring you the game. And by Subway Restaurants. Try the new Tuscan Chicken Melt today. Back in Arizona. And after further review, this is going to go against the Dolphins, I think. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The defender had possession of the ball with two feet inbounds. It's a touchback. Oh, man. Well, we saw a replay from a low angle that looked as though his hand came off the ball. Watch right here. Now his hand comes off the ball, and what they ruled is right there. See his hand came off the ball? But he kept control of it with his right hand, and that's why the interception stood. Two big plays, and we're back to neutral. Tannehill going deep. Hard line all alone. Touchdown. Brian Hartline. My goodness. From one end to the other, just when the Cardinals were about to put this thing away, the Dolphins make two plays that do just the opposite. Hardline's going to come out and run all the way across the formation deep, and they just forget about him. He runs all the way through the center of the defense, and they just don't see him. And what a game. For Brian Hartline, 11 catches, 245 yards. What a huge turn of events with the Cardinals threatening inside the five-yard line, going in for what looked like a game-clinching score. The interception happens, and one play later, the Dolphins are in the Arizona end zone. And the Dolphins, leading 19-14, to 14, are going to go for two. This can make it a seven-point game. They fake it to Bush. Check it down to Javorski Lane. He's got the conversion. Great execution. Javorski Lane is becoming a real weapon. He's a great short yardage back, and he can catch the football in a tight spot that's a great play great throw by Tannehill and a great play call all the way from the other side coming through which forces the linebacker that's Acho who has to come all the way through the traffic to cover him and he just can't get there Tannehill with a franchise rookie record sorry Dan Marino 418 through the air and you look at that score 21 14 you think well we didn't miss that much <laughs> Patrick Peterson with a long fumble return stopped just short of the goal line then the interception that was reviewed by Sean Smith the long touchdown pass it's a heart line and then the conversion to Javorski Lane and that's where we are 21 14 with 705 left to play thing that's important for the Cardinals to do right now is to take a deep breath and say wait a minute we're gonna be all right we've got a lot of time we've just got to play our game and finish this game out there's no need to panic or go into a two-minute hurry up at all Powell takes a knee and let's take another look Hartline is just gonna run through everybody and they just forget about him they drop into zone coverage right there Oh, yeah. Terry Rhodes goes with the crossing route from the other side and leaves his deep safety position. And it's up to Adrian Wilson to try and make up and cover for him, and he just can't get there. So two lead changes in under three minutes. Cardinals have it. Trailing 21-14. And motion before the snap. Full start. Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. First down. Bobby Massey, the rookie right tackle. 
And this is the point, too, where I think the Arizona Cardinals still have to help their tackles in pass protection, as you see there. Those days don't come along all that often. Franchise record for Heartline, 245. When you look at this Miami team, you think, well, where do they need help? At receiver. Yet today, you got Heartline with 245 and Best with 123. Now they try to rally the troops, and he'll be sacked. As long as Arizona is going to subsist on spreading the field and leaving their tackles one on one, they're going to give up pressures. Koa Misi coming in on the left side, and on the back side, you see there as Wake almost gets him, and then it's actually the inside rusher, Odrick, who comes up with the sack. But that is all due to the tackles getting pushed and forcing Cobb up towards those interior rushers. Second and 24 from the goal line. Cobb gets it out to Powell. Stops short of the 10. In Arizona, if they're gonna, they, they're forced to get rid of the football on quick releases. Cobb cannot drop back deep with only five protectors and expect that he's going to be able to step up and deliver the football. And he also can't wait for the route to develop on a deep route. He's going to have to throw short as long as they're only keeping five protectors in. Six minutes left to play. Third and 20 for Arizona. Slant. Early do set. Way short of the first down. Pickup of only eight yards. All it takes is one large sack, and you've killed a drive. First and 24, you're not going to pick it up if you're Arizona. Not against the Miami defense, the way they're pass rushing. And they're going with Devon Bess. Considered more sure-handed than Marcus Thigpen. Best standing back at the 36 of the offense. Makes the fair catch at the 35. And what a day it's been for Brian Hardline in his fourth year. 11 catches, 245 yards, and the 80-yard touchdown reception. Fourth round pick out of Ohio State, and he has a franchise record today for the Dolphins. We were laughing. He told us his career day for a lot. Four sacks. You got a guy with Sean Smith, two picks. And Ryan Tannehill, of course, breaking one of Dan Marino's reams of records. But we talked to Hartline yesterday. He said, you know, so I try and get in the hip pocket of Tannehill to make sure I know how he's thinking and what he's thinking. It certainly paid off today. Bush is the deep back. And they give it to Reggie. Some running room up the middle. That has not been the case often today. Toller made the stop after a gain of seven. And this is, you, know, you talk to the, about the Dolphins. They've prided themselves at this early stage of the season on their ability to run the football, averaging 175 yards on the ground or in that neighborhood. And coming in today against the Cardinals, you'd think it was going to be some pretty tough sledding, but in a tight game like this, you still get opportunities to continue to hand the football off, and this is when a team like the Miami Dolphins needs to show they can run the football when they want to run the football. Second and three. Go, go. Dolphins looking to take time off the clock. They keep it on the ground. Bush with a nice hole up the middle. Into Arizona territory to the 43. Darrell Washington made the stop. Gain of 15. For those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS in the game between Miami and Arizona, along with Steve Tasker. I'm Bill McAtee. Dolphins lead it 21-14. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following the game, except for those of you on the West Coast. And this has the beginnings of a statement drive by Miami. Running the football late in a game with a lead when the defense knows they're going to do it. This stays in the backfield. They give it to him. Bounces off one man, slips as he tries to cut back up field. Down close to the 41. And Arizona selling out now to put a stop to that running game. Eight, nine guys up near the line of scrimmage doing everything they can to stop Miami without 
getting to the point where Arizona has to burn one of their three timeouts. They've got to get the football back, obviously, and it's starting to get desperate. Cardinals trying to remain unbeaten. Trying to go to 4 0. Miami, after a heartbreaking loss in overtime last week to the Jets, trying to get to 500 at 2 and 2. Tannehill, ball is loose. The Cardinals say they have it. Paris Lennon tried to pick it up, but couldn't do it. And somewhere under that pile is the football. The Cardinals are signaling they have it, and they do. And another huge turnover. Tannehill got the ball ripped out of his hands after about two steps away from center. Look at Williams, and that's it. What a quick explosive play. Lane can't even get to him at the snap before Williams is all over Tannehill. I'm sorry, Washington. Unbelievable play. We spoke to Washington on Friday, and this is a guy who is just so fast and so explosive. He came across the line of scrimmage and was on Tannehill in four steps before Lane could move across two steps to pick him up. Darrell Washington made plays all over the field last week against the Eagles. And he's given the Cardinals the football. Down by seven, under three minutes remaining. Cobb goes down. The Dolphins' defense answers. Wake and Misi. The tackles once again. Both of them get beat off the edge by speed. Wake and Misi. Both tackles just can't stop the edge rushers for the Dolphins. And the Cardinals are doing nothing right now to help them. And they can't take sacks like this and expect to stay on the field. Cameron Wake continues to have a monster day. Second and 15. 220 left to play. Cobb. And again, swarmed under. Keeps his feet, but the whistle sounds and Misi will get the sack. And that's going to get him to the three-minute, two-minute warning. Arizona with three timeouts left, but with more, more problems than just the clock at this point. So we have reached the two-minute warning. Cardinals trying to rally down by seven against the Dolphins. Kevin Cobb was able to bring him back in week one, 80 yards. In for John Skelton against Seattle. He's been sacked eight times today by this fierce Miami pass rush, losing 55 yards on those plays. Facing third and 18. They bring in extra protection. He has time, gets rid of it. That is caught by Andre Roberts. And now they'll take the timeout. It's a good time for it. It gives them a minute 50. And a crucial fourth down coming up. It'll be a couple yards short of the first down, a gain of 16. And that's about as far as you can push a deep hitch route. And this, at least, when they help the tackles and the pass protection leave a couple of guys in, it gives Cobb a chance to take advantage of a secondary that was suspect coming into this game today. If you're going to sack your opponent eight times, your secondary can take a day off. And that's what the Dolphins have done. When they protected Cobb, you remember, he hit him for a touchdown in this second half that led to them leading 14-13. 150 left to play. Dansby on the previous play, the first one to wrap him up. So fourth and two, the Cardinals with two timeouts remaining, but if they don't convert here, it won't matter. He brought in Anthony Sherman to help in pass protection. Big play. First down to Roberts. They 
held up just enough. Cobb held on to it to the last moment and had enough time to get that out there. It gives him a huge first down. Just over 130 left to go in the game. time with two timeouts left this is a chance right here perhaps to take a shot at the end zone second and one just over a minute left Cobb. another completion Lloyd the rookie inside of a minute remaining in regulation and I, we said earlier in this half, this is a situation that Arizona Cardinals are used to. They've won four overtime games last half of last year and last... Cobb, pump fake, goes right, incomplete. He's trying to hit Floyd. They're a group that Ken Wisenhunt told us is mentally tough because they've endured a lot together. This is a team that started last season one and six. Most of the core guys, a lot of the roster is the same. They've been 10 and two over their last 12 games and they have won a ton of them. The margin of victory before they beat Philadelphia so bad, average, win, average margin of victory in the 10 previous wins was 3.7 points. They are used to tight games. 38 seconds left to go in regulation. Cardinals down by seven. Cobb. Incomplete. Doucette could not bring it in. Third and ten. And what we're noticing here, the pass rush for Miami, because they're staying on the field in, here in Arizona in the offense, it's hard for that pass rush to keep coming hard and hard and hard because it's just, they're gassed. Pass rush after pass rush starts to favor the offense. And as long as Arizona makes first downs, the defense gets more weary and more weary. Third and 10. Pop to the end zone. Incomplete. Nolan Carroll had good coverage on Michael Floyd. Well, Floyd's going to go up and make an effort for this, but this is the ball that's really almost impossible to catch. On the sideline, he's not going to catch that facing the quarterback. It's too high and away. Clock stops with 29 seconds left. And this is the ball game. They can get a first down if they get down to the five. With time to the end zone, touchdown, Andre Roberts. To make this drive a reality, the Arizona Cardinals had to overcome a third and 20 early on. And once they got that first down, the defensive front of the Dolphins started to get tired. And little by little, Cobb had a little bit more time and a little bit more time to throw it. And they made it work. Feely to tie it up. The Dolphins have been rushing Cobb hard all day, but to do it play after play, they started to get a little winded, and they couldn't get home like they could early in this drive. Cobb moves a little bit out to his left and finds his receiver right in the corner. The tremendous catch by Roberts to get his hands on the ball and feet down. Perfect execution. Roberts, six catches, 118 yards. And two touchdowns. And that was an impressive drive. Everybody we spoke to at the Cardinal facility said what this team had learned and how much they believed in each other, what a close-knit group they have. And it really shows all over the roster, players making plays to keep them alive. You think back to the fumble recovery, 
that led to the long to get him down in deep into Miami territory. They got no points out of it. In fact, going the other way led to the long touchdown pass to Hartline. Never gave up and stayed with it to the end. Tom on that last drive, five of eight for 59 yards and a touchdown. Big pin takes a knee. Another look at the touchdown. Ray Roberts down here at the bottom. Just going to find a way. We're going to get Sean Smith, who has had a, a pretty good day. Double covered, and Roberts hard to the post, then back to the sideline to the pylon. Great route. Tremendous route. And that scoring drive overcame two sacks, and they were able to convert two fourth downs. Dolphins will take a knee, and we're going to go to OT. Dolphins will find themselves in overtime for a second straight week. What a game we've had in Arizona. Sacks, turnovers, great individual performances. Ryan Tannehill, the rookie, 24-37 for 418 yards. Let's take a look at the overtime rules. Both teams must possess the ball once unless a touchdown or safety is scored on the first possession after a kickoff. Two timeouts per team. And booth reviews only, no coaching challenges. Yep. Two timeouts won't have much. And there's no clock. And the thing that you have to remember so many times in the game like this with the Arizona Cardinals desperately getting back into it at the last as regulation closes, there's a great feeling of we still got to play that way as overtime begins. And really, it's just the opposite of that. There's no clock in overtime. You just relax and play your game. You can continue to run the football, run your regular offense. So many times teams have come out and play in that desperation mode when they don't really need to. Gentlemen, we will play up to 15 minutes of overtime. Each team will have an opportunity to possess the ball unless a touchdown is, is scored by the first team that has the ball or a safety. You'll each get two timeouts. Miami, what's your choice? It's a tail. Cardinals win the toss. Arizona will receive it this end. And they will have the football to start overtime. 21 all at the end of regulation. Back to Arizona here on CBS Sports after this. To start the overtime period here in Arizona, we've had four touchdown passes in the last 10 minutes of the game. And it's been a good one. Tied at 21, the Cardinals will have it to start the overtime period. Both of these clubs have been on a roller coaster today. Great plays, heartbreaking plays, huge plays for and against both teams. Carpenter will kick it away to start overtime. Powers the deep man, and he brings it out. And upended by Carpenter, otherwise he would have been gone. Carpenter with the game-saving tackle. And one thing you have to remember, if either team scores a touchdown, it's over. And that was it. He had a lot of space. Look at the space behind Carpenter. There's nobody home. So from the 34-yard line, Williams, the deep back, leading off his ass. Swarming Dolphin defense. Soliai led the charge. That will lose three yards. Well, it's pretty, pretty evident whether it's in first quarter or overtime, you can't run on Miami. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing there. Soliai was dominant on that play what penetration from the defensive tackle that's how you stop the run 
Fitzgerald in motion, second and 13. Trying to run the screen, incomplete. And Cobb just put too much on it. He threw that too hard and low. It was a bad throw on a screen back pass. They had it. It was developed and set up exactly the way Arizona wanted it. But Cobb, with Wake in his face, had to throw the football in the dirt. That had potential to be a big play. Cobb, 28 of 45, 314. Three touchdowns, two interceptions. Third down. That's back to the 44 for a first down. He gets rid of it. Thought Roberts was going to turn out. He turned in. Incomplete. Yeah. And the Cardinals will have to punt. He threw that away because once again, all he saw were Dolphins jerseys coming right towards him. And it's in that situation with a third and 13, if it's not there in overtime, make sure you get the opportunity to punt it. Zastadil has had a good day. Averaging over 46 yards a punt. Des is back deep. Another terrific punt. Des retreats back to the 11. Gets it to the 21. And that's where Miami will take over first and 10, a 58-yard punt and a 10-yard return. And this is now, with Miami's opportunity to possess the football, anybody who scores at all wins the game. It is sudden death. If Miami kicks a field goal, they win. Bush in the backfield with Tannehill. They change the protection. Cardinals come on the all-out blitz. They run the slant. Hartline again on the receiving end. Solar made the stop after a pickup of eight. And Hartline is probably one person who's loving this game going into overtime because he's been in a zone all day. He'll he may never have another game like this. And if I'm Ryan Tannehill. I go to him every opportunity I can. From the 29, second and two. First possession for the Dolphins in overtime. Again, the Cardinals come in the blitz. Tannehill, the out route. Pizzano with the first down. Let's not forget in the heroics of Kevin Cobb and the Arizona Cardinals tying this game up in the last minute of regulation, Ryan Tannehill has played an outstanding football game. And he continues to make quick, decisive decisions and good throws. Go, go. Bush. Now to the 38. And that was good for four yards. A chance of redemption for Carpenter who had two opportunities to put points on the board late last week, one in overtime to win it, one in regulation to put it what seemed to be out of reach and missed both opportunities. Second and six. And again, adjusting the protection, anticipating the blitz. And here they come. Tannehill, incomplete, trying to hit Hartline again. And it's a little cat and mouse with Ryan Tannehill and the defensive front of the Cardinals. He keeps moving Reggie Bush from side to side to find to make sure he's got somebody extra protecting him to where he thinks the pressure's coming from. And on that, Hartline, because of the pressure, Tannehill had to throw it so quickly he couldn't make sure of Hartline's route out of the break. Third and six. Here they come again. Tannehill. Intercepted. Terry Rhodes. Paris Lennon had the pressure. 
as many issues as Arizona has had in protection, Arizona just decides they're going to send too many people for the Dolphins to protect, and Tannehill can't get this ball off in time. You see there, it flutters out of his hand. It's an easy catch for Kerry Rhodes, and it gives Arizona. Paris Lennon had a clean shot. 55 yards, Feely's career long. And as we said, it's sudden death. First team to score in any fashion wins the game. First down for Arizona. Williams fights his way just inside the 45, a gain of three. And possession is so enormous. I think you almost feel like you don't want to do anything outlandish to give yourself an opportunity to turn the football over. A nice hard run on first down. I would be shocked if Arizona tried to air this out here, but it seems they're going to spread this football out and throw it again. Second and seven. They're 10 yards away from a legitimate makeable field goal. The outer reaches will be about the 37. Incomplete is trying to hit Roberts. Let's not forget, Jay Feely is perfect. 17 straight field goals. And you see Roberts, and he just stumbled. I don't know that he would have caught that anyway. But this guy has yet to miss a kick this season. Field goal or extra point. Feely has made his last 17, 6 of 6 in field goal tries this year. Showing blitz on third and seven. And here they come. Cobb able to get rid of it, and that's a first down early set. Well, with this pass as Doucette comes underneath Hausler, this right now our in field goal range. That'll be a 52-yarder. First and ten, the Cardinals will try to get it closer. And I am showing blitz, and here they come. Keep it on the ground. Williams picks up a yard. Kevin Burnett, the linebacker, made the tackle. And there you have it. As the Cardinals are going to pull in the sails, use up their three downs, get one or two or whatever they can get closer to the goal line and give Feely a better opportunity to kick this field goal. From the shotgun on second and nine. Williams keeps his feet. Fights his way down inside the 30. Jimmy Wilson, safety plays in the dime, made the stop after a gain of four. Now, even though they spread the field, there's no doubt the, Carol uh, the Cardinals were going to hand that football off and not throw it. Ryan Williams had that fumble a couple weeks ago against New England. It could have been costly. It wasn't. But very aware of trying to protect the football. Third and four. Williams. Push back. Same play. Now, this will be interesting to see if Joe Philbin calls a timeout before Feely kicks this ball. Took some heat this week with the timeout called at the last instant on the field goal try by Nick Folk in overtime that turned out to be blocked. Folk then came back and made the next attempt, giving the Jets the win. We talked to Joe about that yesterday. He said that calling a timeout in that situation is pretty much standard to his way of thinking, and he will take the timeout. And I think it's smart to take it before they snap the football. Sometimes you give that kicker a chance to practice his run through. It's a good thing for the kicker. But Philbin told us, because you almost have to have something to talk me out of calling the timeout. 
last week against the Jets. We mentioned this in OT. Rex Ryan iced. Dan Carpenter called the timeout. Carpenter then missed the 48-yarder that would have been the game winner. Then Philbin tried to do the same to Nick Folk. Dolphins actually blocked the kick as the whistles blew. Folk then connected from 33 yards out on the retry as the Jets won it. A heartbreaker for Miami, 23 to 20 in overtime. Yeah, a lot of, he took some heat for it, but when I watched that, he called the timeout, the whistles blew, and the Jet players stopped playing. That's why the kick got blocked. It was not, it wasn't because of a breakdown or anything like that. The, the play was dead before the ball was snapped, and that was an unusual attempt, so. He called, he's gonna, he called the timeout. We'll see if it works. So, from 46 yards out to keep Arizona undefeated. Then he led, getting good. Six-yard field goal in overtime by Jay Feely, who has now converted his last 18 field goal tries. Ken Wisenhunt will take that. And another tough loss as Joe Philbin tries to give a little body English, but it was good. And Miami will fall to one and three. Still a lot of positives for the Dolphins coming out of this game. Great play from a young quarterback. Better things on the horizon. So our final score, 24-21. Arizona coming up next. The season premieres of 60 Minutes, The Amazing Race, The Good Wife, and The Mentalist. So for Steve Tasker, this is Bill McAtee saying so long from Glendale, Arizona. You've been watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47. The Arizona Cardinals able to come back.